welcome everybody to the call. Um, as you all know, we have uh, announced the acquisition of two businesses on Friday, and we uploaded the presentation along with detailed materials. So for today's call, uh, as we normally do, Sunil will walk you through the key slides uh, for about 15-20 minutes, and then we will straight away get into the Q&A. Uh, so yeah, over to you, Sunil. Thanks, thanks, Nidhi. Uh, so if you go to the uh, next slide number six, I think. Yeah, so I think uh, I, I'll probably skip this slide because I think everyone knows what Tata Consumer is. If you go to the next slide. Yeah, so over the past three years, uh, we've invested significantly in building a strong foundation to drive accelerated growth. Uh, we've built a strong, I would like to think, a strong distribution system with 1.5 million outlets which we touch directly, which is up 3x from where we started. Uh, and uh, a numeric reach uh, is now 3.8, which is one and a half times where we started. Uh, we've invested in infrastructure. We've got close to 10,000 uh, distributors and sub-distributors. We've got about 5,000 people on street across 43 CNFAs. Uh, we built our capability in alternate channels, which to us are the channels of the future. From a 19% contribution in FY21, we are 27. And we've significantly strengthened our digital capabilities. Cloud, SAP, single instance, strong SND systems, IBP, and analytics. Uh, we've always uh, maintained that we have six clear pillars for our strategy, strengthening and accelerating our core, driving digital and innovation, which is what uh, makes us future fit, unlocking synergies and driving costs down, uh, building capabilities and competencies and a future-ready organization, exploring organic and uh, inorganic opportunities while embedding sustainability. Now, the reason why we are here today is because under the exploring new opportunities, we've always said we will grow organically as well as inorganically. Inorganically, we will we have a very clear roadmap of what we're looking for, and when we find value, we will look at doing inorganic options, and here we are having announced uh, two acquisitions on the same day. Uh, two acquisitions, Capital Foods and Organic India, both different businesses. Capital Foods has two big brands, uh, Ching Secret and uh, Smith & Jones. Uh, Ching Secret is synonymous with Desi Chinese uh, with a pan-India appeal. Smith & Jones uh, is a Western uh, brand, uh, Western position brand uh, playing again uh, in different spices, pace, uh, etc. Uh, both cater to fast-growing in-home consumption of non-Indian cuisines. In fact, if you look at it, if you look at a pan-Indian cuisine, Ching Secret is probably right up there. Uh, and this is, uh, it fits in perfectly with uh, the pillars that we identified for our uh, portfolio, uh, where we said core, pantry, ready-to-drink beverages, breakfast, mini-meal snacking, and uh, future opportunities. So, uh, uh, Ching Secret fits in perfectly into our pantry platform and a little bit into mini-meals and snacking with gross margins, which are significantly accretive to our cur current uh, margins. Organic India, on the other hand, is a leading better for you uh, brand with, I mean, rooted in organic. Uh, we've got an opportunity to become a formid formidable player in herbal infusions. Currently, about 40% of their business is uh, uh, infusions, 40% is supplements. Supplements largely uh, sold outside India, but we've got an opportunity to grow them within India itself. And expands uh, our total addressable market into fast-growing and high gross margin categories. This gross margin is still higher at a 55%. And more importantly, it gets us into health and wellness and nutrition categories. The big, big short-term potential here is for both the brands, and I'll come to that, is to leverage our network and uh, drive significant operating efficiencies. Uh, I talked about this. Uh, if you look at first the slides, uh, the points which are marked in uh, uh, slightly reddish color. So <clears throat> Capital Foods fits in perfectly into the pantry platform with sauces, chutneys, noodles, Chinese masalas, pasta masala, ginger garlic paste. 
and a little bit into uh, mini meals and snacking with soups and instant noodles. Uh, Organic India fits in perfectly. We've always said we want to premiumize our tea business, so we get tea and infusions. It's not only tea. Uh, we, we also get organic packaged food, albeit it's a little bit small right now, but we still get a platform. And uh, we have herbal supplements uh, in our Horizon 3 uh, pillar. Uh, what it does uh, to Tata Consumer is it, it turbocharges our progress towards becoming a premium food and beverage platform. Uh, today we have market leading food and beverage brands, we've got strong S&D and we are continuing to expand that. Uh, we've delivered and will continue to deliver steady growth over the mid to long term. A mid teens EBITDA uh, and a strong innovation right now we have from, come from 0.8 to 5, 5.5% innovation to sales with strong R&D facilities. Going forward with these uh, brands, uh, we now have offerings across the entire gamut of uh, cuisines for the Indian consumer. From Sampan, which is Indian, to Smith & Jones, which is Western, to uh, Ching Secret, which is right now they see Chinese, but opportunity to make it into an Asian slash Oriental uh, brand. And with Organic India, strong, better for you uh, products. Superior double-digit growth, these are, uh, these are categories which are growing 15 to 20%, very strong brands. Once we provide fuel with our distribution, etc., we expect to accelerate the top-line momentum while, as I mentioned, their gross margins are significantly accretive. Uh, therefore, it, there is significant scope for us in our consolidated p ls to drive uh, improved gross and EBITDA margins. More importantly, as I mentioned, these are very, very strong brands that can provide umbrellas to get into more innovative and emerging product categories. Uh, so a bit about Capital Foods. Capital Foods, as, as I mentioned, it is two strong brand Chings, uh, which is primarily Desi Chinese, and Smith & Jones, which is primarily Western. Chings is the leader in Desi Chinese across categories. They actually created the Szechuan Chutney market, and the Smith & Jones is the number one in ginger garlic paste. Uh, unique products for in-home consumption, uh, net mar gross margins of close to 936 crores, net 750, and there's a reason I'm talking about it, and uh, uh, I'll, I'll elaborate it as we go further. Uh, gross margins uh, 50% and EBITDA margins 20% plus on an ongoing basis. There is a little bit of upheaval in the past two years as they went through uh, some changes in organization structure, team, etc., but on an ongoing basis, standalone, they, we do expect them to have a 20% plus EBITDA margin. I talked about the fast-growing uh, categories that they are in. They have de delivered a 20% CAGR in net revenue over the past three years, continuing to improve EBITDA margins. And more importantly, they are back in. They've got seven plants, uh, three own, four COPAC, uh, with uh, ability to scale. Utilization is still uh, not ideally where it should be and therefore we have an opportunity to utilize this capacity as we scale the business. Uh, very, very strongly connected to ethnic Indian retailers globally. Uh, in fact, also creating white labels uh, for them and 17% of the revenue comes from exports. I do think this can grow significantly. Uh, the most important thing is they have only 350,000 outlets. Just as a perspective, I have I directly touch 1.5 million. My numeric reach is 3.8, 3.9 million. Uh, and uh, therefore, the ability to scale in the short term through distribution. Uh, they have number one, number two uh, positions across five uh, at least segments. Uh, Sejuan chutneys, blended masala, sauces, ginger garlic paste, and soups. Uh, they've got a very strong uh, brand recall. If you look at awareness of 88, consideration 84, ever use 79. I mean, this, are, this, this is a uh, epitome of a strong brand if uh, I look at it. Uh, on the right-hand top, I talked about the incremental GT unlock. We have ability to, I mean, ideally, in an ideal world, if I get to all my outlets, it's 10x. Uh, if you look at the box below, uh, e-com, they are very, very uh, weak right now, and I can, I, I built a strong e-com platform. About 9% plus of my revenue comes from e-com. We've got a strong team, which can help scale this up very quickly. Uh, modern trade, I think they're decent. 
we are good so i think uh, we can take uh, modern trade also to the next level uh basically we've got a long runway for growth uh if you look at it the chinese food service market is expected to grow at 12 to 14% uh, given the strong consumer preferences uh whether you look at uh, the ratio of in home to mexican in uh, in organized food service industry especially in the us and and if you compare it to the equivalent of what we have here in desi chinese this is that 30 this is 3 so there is a long runway for growth and we do expect that things will continue to have a very very strong runway as we go forward currently our estimate is uh, the desi chinese segment is expected to grow at about 24% cagr uh and that 24% cagr provides us enormous uh, opportunities we expect our relevant market to grow at a 13% cagr uh, across all the segments you look at anywhere from 14 to uh 40% uh, growth across the segments that they operate so overall 24% and most importantly this high growth also comes coupled with high margin uh 50% plus which is i would think quite up there in the food and beverage segments uh apart from that i talked about capital foods having very very strong uh, connects with uh, global retailers you see the red dots so whether it is australia uae or the us US especially they've got a very strong connect with the big retailers out there uh, we've got a footprint in similar markets and therefore uh, we do expect us to be leveraging their relationships and infrastructure as well uh, to make sure we explore our own brands like sampan rasa joyful etc in summary uh, this facilitates us into high growth high margin categories significant time of 21000 crores plus they've grown at close to 20% there's no I, I, we can only accelerate from here on this is in line with our uh, strategic priority to expand into high margin high growth categories strong brands uh, chings is synonymous with desi chinese smith and jones strong brand i think can accelerate further uh, consumer trends of uh, growing in home cooking of western cuisines smith jones smith and jones right on top of that they are all the product categories that they bring in are completely accretive to our business there are no overlaps and they are margin accretive i think this is an ideal combination if ever there was one and of course uh, we have always said we would look for brands which have a strong india base and if there is an export potential or an export leg that is icing on the cake capital foods gets in that for us organic india uh, very quickly uh, it is the leading better for you organic brand of food and beverage and herbal supplements uh, 7000 plus crores tam in india 75000 crores globally so overall 82 uh the big big thing in this category is given a organic and b nutrition uh customer trust is key to success uh, i think organic india has built this over the past few years uh they are present across channels it's right now only 350 crores there's a reason for that they are present only in 24000 outlets uh they are focused on sustainable living and more importantly they've got a 55% plus gross margin it's in line with our strategy for a horizon 3 segment uh most importantly and i would highlight this we spent lot of time on the supply chain and making sure for want of a better word i'll use kosher they've got rigorous product testing procedures and certifications valid for global major global markets we've gone right from the back end to pulling products which they've already sold testing them making sure that when we put the tata brand name on this uh, we are truly selling organic products and therefore i would say they've got a unique robust hard to replicate and more importantly scalable backend uh, because they've got a direct connect with about 2 uh, and a half thousand farmers uh, indirect with about 10000 plus farmers so 12 and a half thousand farmers 130 people uh, working with those farmers this is a supply chain which is hard to replicate the other piece i would want to highlight is this is sits at the ideal intersection 
of ancient Indian traditional medicine and organic. So there are players in Ayurveda, Indian medicine, there are players in organic, but there is no one who has built this bridge and occupied this strong position. Uh, as I said, 40% of their business comes from supplements, uh, which are sparsely distributed in India. 40% of their business comes out of tea and infusions, and 20% from organic packaged food. Uh, their teas are priced 15 to 20% premium over Tetley, which is our most premium tea, and their gross margins are significantly accretive to our business. Uh, I talked about the strong supply chain. 130 people, 2,500 farmers direct and 12,000 farmers uh, indirectly associated. They actually pioneered the commercial cultivation of Tulsi. Uh, with uh, Organic India being the preferred buyer across this entire set of farmers, they've got certifications across the globe. Uh, and like I said, we spent a significant amount of our due diligence time into this particular uh, aspect because once we have this, uh, then we can scale very quickly into other organic products as, as well. Uh, this provides a unique opportunity to strategically develop a high growth, high margin health and wellness platform for data consumer. The category in India is growing at 11%, category globally is growing at 8%, but it is a huge, huge category. Uh, organic India effectively operates in fragmented uh, markets, but high growth markets, uh, has strong consumer uh, trust. It is diversi diversified geographically, about 50% of the business comes out of India, 50% comes from the US. The good part is we think we can grow the India business as well as the international business for a simple reason. India, they are only in 24,000 outlets, and I, I would repeat, I am present directly in 1.5 million in uh, total numeric reach of 3.8 million. Uh, out, out of their uh, business, which comes 50% which comes internationally, 40 out of that 50 comes from the US, and that too primarily from three big uh, retailers, which is Whole Foods, Sprouts, and the Natural Grocer. Uh, they, they are sparsely distributed in Canada. They don't have a distributor in the UK. Uh, so you can imagine with my footprint in Canada, UK, Europe, Australia, South Africa, we've got a long, long runway even in the international space for this business. Uh, I talked about the 24,000 outlets. They're almost negligible in modern trade. While you see a 22% contribution from e-commerce, I would just point out to the fact that it, this is 22% of 350 crores. Uh, my online business is close to now 1,000 crores. So we have the ability to propel this far, far more. And of course, I talked about exports. Uh, most important in India, uh, we've got some products which appeal to the pharma channel, but we never had the heft of the scale uh, to build a dedicated go-to market. So like Tata GoFed, Soulful, Tetley, these do sell in the pharma channel. But now with the organic India uh, infusions and more, Im more importantly the supplements coming in, we will now focus on building a full go-to market to address the pharma opportunity in India. In summary, high growth, high margin wellness pl platform with a leading better for you organic brand uh, in line with our strategy to expand TAM, in expanding into adjacencies. Uh, it's got a robust uh, sourcing and scalable backend infrastructure for organic products and very, very, very strong farmer connect and lot of goodwill where they operate in. Unparalleled end-to-end -end certifications uh, across the supply chain with high consume consumer trust, I, a customer trust, I would just like to highlight, I mean, if you've got to have num the to be in the top three positions, you know, Whole Foods or a Sprouts, uh, you've got to have top-notch products uh, and top-notch consumer loyalty. Uh, product categories, co completely complementary, tea and infusions, completely premium to us, the Horizon 3 supplements, completely accretive to us, both of them being margin accretive. And I did talk about a strong India business, but ability to leverage it globally as well. Uh, talking about synergies, basically top line and cost synergies. Uh, in terms of top line, uh, obviously huge runway for expanding the GT footprint. Uh, we've got a strong e-commerce team which can drive growth in that channel and 
continue to uh, drive high uh, double digit growth in modern trade and of course ex enhance our export footprint in terms of cost uh, because of their subscale nature they they used to pay higher trade margins i think uh, immediately we see an opportunity to optimize that uh, selling expenses again because of difference of scale they are selling expenses across whether it is variable or fixed are uh, significantly higher than what we have we see an opportunity to optimize there middle of the pnl the fixed costs whether it is legal finance logistics distribution once they start leveraging our costs we've got enough slack in the system to accommodate them as well we'll see a, a opportunity there and of course uh, capacity utilization on the back end whether it is between optimizing between our facilities and capital foods facilities or by growing uh, organic india leveraging the back end i think there is opportunity to uh, uh, drive capacity utilization higher in both the both the acquisitions uh in terms of the financial transaction overview i'll just request lk to walk you through it Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, just walk you through capital first, and then uh, maybe comment on organic. In the case of capital foods, we are going to acquire 75% upfront, and 25% will be acquired over a period of uh, three years. The uh, idea is to have full operating control, uh, the minority shareholding, which will be partly with Ajay, the promoter, and partly with uh, Invest, which is one of the existing uh, private equity investors. uh we will have full flexibility to manage and integrate the business <coughs> they will have certain protective rights so it's not a joint venture it's a majority uh, controlled and will be consolidated as such uh the upfront up purchase of 75% is at enterprise value of 5100 crores uh it translates to a multiple of over 6% based on fy24 net sales having said that uh, sunil talked about the distribution and the where it is in terms of reach and the uh, growth potential so if you just want to look at a number one year forward i think it will be uh, a very reasonable number uh, in terms of uh, margins also this business has strong gross margin in terms of gross margin profile it will be accretive and ebitda margin will be in excess of 20% moving on to organic india we intend to purchase about 100% there is a small earn out Uh, which is cap which is linked to uh, future financial performance the enterprise value is 1900 and the multiple uh, is lower at five times even here there is good uh, growth potential having said that uh, a large part of the business is in overseas markets i think 40 45% so growth rate for that will be uh, a little lower having said that the addressable market outside india for uh, health supplements and nutraceuticals is fairly large so the market opportunity is large and we will have a growth rate as we expand distribution build new products but it's going to take a little longer than just ramping up distribution as we would do in the case of capital foods uh the impact on financials uh, to some extent depends on the financing plan uh, which will be approved by the board uh, later this week uh, when we are saying that there is an eps break even and cash eps accretive we have made some assumption on a mix of funding which includes uh, some equity funding uh, but the board will uh, approve and we will communicate the actual funding plan uh, towards the end of this week uh, we expect the closing to be done in quarter 4 of uh, this financial year and we have already started working on the operational integration yeah i think that's it uh, we can get into the q and a now thank you very much we will now begin the question and answer session anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on the touchstone telephone if you wish to remove yourself from the question queue you may press star and 2 participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question ladies and gentlemen we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles
first question is from the line of Abneesh Roy from Novama. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks and uh, congrats on both the acquisitions. Uh, my first question is on Organic India and there are three subparts to this. Uh, one is on your international business. Bulk of the international, essentially 80% comes from US. So, wanted to understand uh, what is the reason for uh, less success in Europe, Canada, Australia, and is the industry for uh, uh, this kind of a product also having 80% salience to US? So, that is one uh, uh, subpart. Second is for supplement, you said largely it is outside India. So, wanted to understand here what is the issue uh, and what will be the plan here? Would you focus much more given uh, your current uh, uh, business also? Bulk of it comes from India. And third subpart would be on the broader organic uh, positioning. Uh, currently in India, certification, laws, and regulations are not very strict. Uh, when do you see uh, Tata focusing on in terms of the organic packaged food, which is currently 20%? When do you see uh, Tata is focusing much more? Because that, I think, is also linked to the certification regulation in India becoming stricter. So that is the first question. So, so... Uh, Abhish, thanks. Uh, let let me answer uh, the first one, right? Uh, fifty percent of their business is from international markets, and forty out of that fifty comes out of the U.S. Uh, let me say it's probably more by default rather than design. The original uh, of the original founders, one of them was from the U.S., uh, and therefore uh, the focus on the U.S. market. That's number one. Number two, lot of the expertise which they drew. Uh, in terms of the supplements, etc., were from experts based out of the U.S. Uh, and therefore, they put up a sales team and a team out there. It's about 17, 18 people right now uh, who are based out of uh, Boulder, Colorado, and working out of there. And therefore, they've got the listing into the three big chains in the U.S. They export to about 48 odd countries per se. But let me say there is. <laughs> in an enormous opportunity to get proper distributors, proper expansion, proper listing into outlets, and therefore expand it into Europe, Canada, UK, Australia, everywhere. And that is the opportunity that we see. It's not that they've restricted themselves to the US or they have not got an opportunity elsewhere. It is just that they focus, given their size, scale, uh, and ambitions at that point of time, they only focus on the US. So that's number one. Number two, you're right about uh, the market internationally being uh, higher. It's 75,000 crores. India is about 7,000 crores. But 7,000 crores is also a decent uh, market for us to go after, especially given the fact that, as I mentioned, uh, these guys play at the sweet spot of traditional Indian medicine and organic. And once the Tata name comes into play in a place like organic, there is the trust component which will play up. We've got our distribution to ramp up. Modern trade, you saw 3% contribution. I mean, in modern trade itself, there is an opportunity to ramp it up. So we do see substantial opportunity to grow in India as well. You're right. The market market size is bigger internationally. And therefore, I would say both parts will grow uh, significantly. To your last point, I think uh, I will point out to the presentation, uh, the slides uh, on uh, certifications. The, they are certified globally, and from uh, earlier they used to do about 180 tests. After we had discussions with them saying we've got to be uh, certified across the globe, now they do about 500 plus tests, so they would pass organic certification anywhere in the world. And I do believe anywhere in the world means definitely in India, and this is across all product categories. So I would be very happy for FSACI to ramp up organic certification because if anything, it leaves me at the high end of the pedestal. Sure, my second and last question is on uh, capital food. So when I see distribution, uh, you did speak on the huge uh, scale-up opportunity. Uh, but wanted to check, uh, you already done the soulful integration. So when I see the numbers of capital foods versus Tata's current distribution, there is say, almost 1 is to 4 difference uh, versus the direct and 1 is to 10 versus the total. But uh, seeing the success of Soulful, my question is, in three years, can this uh, 350,000 current distribution, can it become, say, at least your direct distribution, which is there currently, which is, say, 15 lakh, 
Is that possible? Uh, because uh, Indian Chinese, does it reach to that 15 million direct? Uh, uh, would you know that number? Plus, how easy, going by the soulful, is it to uh, uh, target the existing direct distribution in terms of the scale up? Uh, so, so uh, Abnish, I am not a forecaster of the future, uh, but just to give you some past numbers, Soulful, when we took it up, it was 15,000 outlets. I think in three years, we've got to about 300,000 outlets, right? Number one. Number two, the categories that they, categories that they uh, sell would be available in almost all Kirana outlets. Desi Chinese's are definition. Remember, they've also got Smith & Jones, ginger garlic paste, pasta masalas. They've got soups. Instant, instant noodles. So, definitely, I would say the opportunity to enter into every single of my total direct and probably a large percentage of my numeric opportunity does exist. The, the focus now will be to make sure that we integrate these businesses quickly, uh, provide the extra bandwidth that is required at the front end to drive that distribution into outlets, and in an ideal world, I would like to do it as fast as possible. Sure, that's all from my side. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Mehircha from Nomura. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Thank you for taking my question and congrats on uh, good acquisitions. Uh, so my first question is on, is on Ching. Mr. Mee, uh, sorry to interrupt you. Maybe request you to use your hands so you're not audible clearly, sir. Is this any better? Yes, sir. Please go ahead. Okay. Uh, apologies for that. Uh, and congrats on the, the good acquisitions. Um, so my first question is on Ching's. Can you share the growth rate level that one can envisage in Ching's? Uh, you did mention that the focus categories uh, you know, can grow at about 24%. Uh, historically, we've not seen that kind of growth. Uh, can you uh, can you uh, can one grow at a higher growth rate than the category over the medium term? Uh, so that's uh, question one. And a subpart to it also, if you can share the revenue breakdown of Ching's portfolio into sauces and noodles, uh, will it be more skewed towards sauces and noodles uh, and less towards noodles? Uh, so, so Meher, uh, in the last three three years, the CAGR of Capital Foods has been 20%. We do expect the categories that they operate in to grow at a 24% CAGR going forward. And remembering the fact that they already have very strong position, they should be able to ride category growth. If anything, we should be able to equal, if not outpace, given the distribution strength that we have. And therefore, we remain extremely uh, bullish about strong double-digit growth as we go forward on capital foods. And I would just like to highlight the fact that it is not only top line. Uh, remember, it is significantly accretive to my gross margin. So as we grow uh, that faster than the rest of my portfolio, my margin profile starts to change faster than that. So that's number one. Number two, I, I think they've got a decent mix of uh, uh, thing. About 77% of their turnover comes out of Chings. 17% comes out of uh, Smith & Jones and about uh, 6 to 7 percent comes out of all their other categories. Got it, sir. Thank you. Uh, sir, on uh, Ching's again, on margins, uh, one would ideally assume that the brand would have remained underinvested as, you know, they were thinking about uh, selling out, etc. Uh, and it would require higher investment once it comes under Tata Consumer. Uh, how much of cost synergies can be extracted and in, in which line items can we can see that and after the cost synergies, do you still expect, uh, you know, I, one, I, I believe that you expect EBITDA margin to be higher than 20 plus percent. So what can be the sustainable margin profile? I, I did hear you on media talking it to be upwards of 25 percent, but maybe a little more color on that will be very helpful. Uh, so, so, Mir, uh, actually if I look at the synergy lines, and this is true both for organic and uh, capital, Anywhere from 200 to 400 basis point comes out straight on the trade margin piece itself, right? Uh, that, that's number one as we combine. Number two, the entire center of 55% gross margin translating to 20% EBITDA. So you can imagine the cost line item sitting there. Uh, so there is a significant percentage which will come out in fixed and variable costs in the middle of the P&L. That's number one. Uh, number two, and therefore we remain confident of delivering a 20% plus EBITDA uh, going forward. Uh, 
uh, in terms of and investments i that is one area i think they have not uh, shied away from in fact uh, one of the reasons why they built what they built is because of the investments behind uh, media and uh, consumer connect uh, let me say their anp mar anp spends are at least 2 to 2 and a half x of what we spend uh, and while uh, the percentages might come down as they grow significantly in absolute terms we would continue to increase the anp spends uh, behind the brand understood thank you so my second question is on organic india um you know uh, if you can you know talk about your plans to scale up organic india apart from the you know the the clear uh, leveraging of your distribution reach that that can, that will play out uh, maybe some color on what category expansions that one can expect out of organic india and the kind of growth numbers that one should uh, think about uh, in this business so so meer we've got already uh, very very specific plans on uh, both capital foods and organic india to leverage our distribution while making sure that both of these brands get focused just as a perspective right now the intent is that in all 1 million plus outlets what we had started 6 months back of doing a split route one broadly for uh, one for food and one for beverage we will be adding a third route to all 1 million plus uh, uh, cities uh, and then going one step below half a million uh, plus where we had one route operating we are now going to split it into two so, so that bandwidth again is going to double uh, with that at least in the big places which matter in the short term i think we will get to distribution uh, very quickly on the product categories itself uh, they uh, i i think this is work for us to do uh, we see an opportunity given the brand name organic india a given their supply chain and this connect with uh, this farmers and their agri team to boot and more importantly their immense amount of knowledge sitting within their uh, system uh, we do think we can expand into many other categories but that is a map yet to be drawn up from our side in detail got it sir so one last question to uh, you know lkk i mean uh, on the accounting of the acquisition if you can kindly share uh, you know how much one should think about what will sit in goodwill and how much on intangible intangibles and if there is any tax benefit on uh, depreciation charge on intangibles that can be availed uh, so yeah that's my last question so i'll just give you so we are still working through the purchase price allocation uh, you know part will be in goodwill and part will be in in intangibles uh the proportion as we finalize we will let you know uh on the intangibles uh given that the brand especially in the case of capital foods really strong there will be a reasonable attribution to the brand and we will uh, unlike uh the other brands we will uh, look to amortize that is the thinking so over a period of time we can expect some amortization the proportion as we finalize the purchase price allocation you know uh organic is similar situation maybe the attribution tangible will be slightly lower uh, than in the case of chain now the other uh, point that you need to remember is from a tax perspective uh, you know we will certainly uh, look to claim uh, deductions uh, because uh, based on the the decisions that you are probably aware uh, we have not factored in any upside on 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 tax at this point in time in our return calculations but yes i think these are uh, deductions that we will uh, certainly seek to get got it thank you very much in all the way best sir thank you our next question is from the line of sheila rati from morgan stanley please go ahead yeah thank you for taking my questions and congratulations on the two acquisitions Uh, so my first question was, uh, you know, you, Sunil, you talked about the salience of online channels for Organic India. I think about 22 percent. I just wanted to understand what is the salience for uh, Chings on the online side, and just for Organic India's category, you think that uh, it will be more prevalent on the online side or offline side, even going ahead, because you know this category in general is very nascent in India. Uh, so uh, shila first of all i mean capital foods i think the ecom contribution is 4 uh, you're right about organic india being 22 uh, 
I think that 22 is again by default, not by design, primarily because the products are not widely available in the offline market and therefore consumers go online. At least when we, when the initial proposals had come up and we had gone to check with consumers uh, and did a dipstick of what they think about their brands, they, they, the feedback that we've got was great brands but not available. I either need to go a Fab India store or a very few places, pockets like in Gurgaon or Bangalore, etc. In some pockets, it was available. Therefore, consumer bought it online. But that said, there is no reason why, as we ramp up, we will definitely ramp up offline distribution. There is no reason why uh, online shouldn't continue to grow at a significant clip. Uh, Capital Foods, the focus always had been offline and uh, 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 the Kirana stores, uh, LUPs expansion of distribution etc and therefore i think there was that much less focus on driving online uh, here I, I think in capital foods we will bring our muscle to bear just as a perspective in my my business about nine percent plus of my contribution comes from ecom uh, there's no reason why uh, capital foods also shouldn't be in that range if not higher understood uh, the second question was, uh, do we see any rebranding opportunities for either of the brands, you know, un under the Tata Sampan uh, umbrella or in any way, or do we want to pursue the same branding which these, uh, you know, these two companies have? Uh, so, so, Sheila, let me, let me say uh, very clearly, we bought these brands for what they have built apart from the institutional knowledge, supply chains, networks, and the people that they have. There is no reason for us to go and dismantle that overnight. Uh, what will happen though is we will go back to consumers and see what happens uh, if we add Tata to it in one form or the other. This is a similar thing that we've done in Soulful, where we had got very clear feedback that apart from the two geographies, say two or three geographies where Soulful was distributed decently and consumers knew about it. Uh, the rest of the places, adding the Tata brand name did wonders uh, to the trial generation among consumers and that's why we went with Tata Soulful. But as a perspective, Himalayan is Himalayan, right? So we've not added the Tata name there. So there is no, I would say, ideology or compulsion to add the Tata name, but if it does add value uh, in one form or the other, we will consider it. Understood. Uh, my final question, uh, you know, in the presentation you talked about, you know, uh, the premium construct or, you know, we're heading to becoming a PM, premium FMB play. Uh, so from where we are right now, uh, especially looking at the emerging businesses, uh, what would be our premium construct now and what would this change to once we have these brands under our umbrella and where do you see that, say, in the next three to five years? Uh, so, so, Sheila, uh like I said, both these businesses, uh, gross margins are significantly accretive to my business, number one. Number two, their growth rates are far more, uh, uh, accrete, I mean, faster than my current business. So as a percentage of mix, this will continue to grow. What we do expect today, uh, growth businesses for us contribute to 20% of our portfolio. Uh, and by addition of these businesses, my growth businesses will now be 30% of my portfolio, which will continue to grow at 30%. That's the expectation. Uh, just to follow up here, uh, Sunil, this would also include Tata something which has a high, less component of being premium. So my question was more to do with, you know, how do we think of Tata consumer being a premium play? I mean, that is where I was coming from. So, so uh, Sheila, it's not that we, we are, I mean, uh, sacrificing all our current business and tomorrow becoming a whole premium play. This is the journey towards becoming a more premium F&B play. You see the mix of businesses. Tata Sampan will grow, but remember Soulful is a significantly higher margin. Narishko is a slightly accretive, equal if not slightly accretive margin to my this thing. These are completely accretive to uh, uh, my margin. So overall, uh, I would think it balances out if, not, if anything starts adding to the incremental uh, incrementality of Tata consumer in margin terms. Understood. Thank you very much. And uh, can I just request everyone to limit your questions to two, please? Thank you. 
ladies and gentlemen, in order to ensure that the management is able to address questions from all participants in the conference, please limit your questions to two per participant. Should you have a follow-up question, we would request you to rejoin the queue. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Santosh Kumar Keshri from Keshri Finance. Please go ahead. Hello, am I audible? Yes, sir. Maybe request you to use your handset, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Am I audible better now? Yes, sir. Please go ahead. So, uh, uh, to Mr. Sneel, I had one question. Uh, and uh, we are uh, uh, buying brands uh, which are homegrown and which have come up for uh, almost a decade or so uh, over the past one year before our eyes, very eyes. So uh, I just wondered that does Tata consumer have also plans to develop its own brand in such a way that they become, uh, they catch the imagination of uh, consumers and become a bigger brand in themselves? Because what I'm seeing is that over the past few years, we are spending capital and maybe we'll go for a regime equity also and debt to fund this acquisition. So uh, uh, this is like a splurging lot of money into brands and uh, maybe the innovation which is there in the company for developing a homegrown brand may not be, uh, you know, getting so much attention of the management. So, uh, Mr. Santosh, I would humbly beg to disagree with your uh, uh, assessment. Incidentally, Tata Consumer is not a brand. Tata Consumer is the name of the company, and we are in, we are in the business of building brands. Whether it is Tata Tea uh, and the various brands, like premium, Agni, Gold, which we have built, and the total tea business is 5,000 crores. Tata Salt is a brand by itself, which is close to now, uh, close to 3,500, 4,000 crores. Uh, or Himalayan, which is, I would say, the number one mineral water brand in the country. Or Sampan, which has come from nowhere and is now on track to become a 1,000 crore brand. Or Tata Copper Plus, which is close to 600 crores, uh, five to 600 crores this year. I do think we are building brands. Organic brands do take time to build. Organic time, uh, organic brands take time because you have to build physical av physical availability as as well as mental availability with consumers. Both these brands have been around for 25 years. They built very strong brands. They've got very strong products. The the I, I think that they lack is a robust operating system and front end distribution, if I may. And we do think we can create great value with this. Okay, next sense, Mr. Sunil. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Percy Pantaki from IIFL. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Uh, I just wanted to understand why in uh, FY21, uh, Capital Foods had a 60% uh, YOI growth. Was there some inorganic portion uh, in this in FY21? Uh, Pati, uh, Capital Foods, uh, the, both in Capital Foods and Organic India, there is a little bit of noise in the past. Uh, there's some good noise, some bad noise. Uh, Capital Foods had a phenomenal run in the initial days of COVID because remember packaged food, in-home consumption, uh, Western cuisines, Desi Chinese uh, did very well and that was the reason why they had a super bump. Uh, but after that they had some issues with the management teams etc and that's why they went through a little bit of upheaval. Uh, you would see now FY24 delivering again very strong growth both on the top and bottom line. It was a similar story in organic India where they've gone through some upheavals uh, on organization, structure, people, etc. in the past. Now that they're stable, FY20, uh, apart from that, FY23, uh, they had a lot of cleanup to do, one-off cleanups because of some issue, because of these exact issues of the past. And that's why you'll see some noise in the bottom line numbers as well. Uh, going forward, we do expect steady state. I mean, at least right now, they are steady state, very, very stable, both on the top line and bottom line. So, uh, FY21, Capital Foods, it was the COVID-induced uh, bump. Understood, understood. And for Capital Foods, uh, what percentage of sales comes from uh, Horeca? I would think today it is very, very small, uh, Percy, and that is one of the opportunities. Uh, given the pace, chutneys, noodles, coupled with the portfolio that we have of tea, coffee, 
etc uh, i i think we've got a long long uh, runway in building out our food service uh, currently about 8 to 9% of capital foods comes out of the horeca channel per se now uh, of course when you say horeca this is direct sales to horeca because horeca also buys from kirana stores etc when you are not available right so we don't have that number but if i just, just stay for a minute with the 8% number i do think it should be significantly higher uh, and uh, we we started building our food service uh, business about uh, one and a half years back or so once we acquired tara smart foods uh, now uh, i i think all of a sudden the portfolio gathers heft and therefore we can accelerate that piece right and lastly if we exclude the one offs uh, in uh, the organic india margin uh, uh, what is the current run rate of the margin excluding the one offs but before factoring in any synergies or any value that tata might add to it so uh, per se 55% gross margin now you can imagine how much flow through i will have on my ebitda percentage right 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 but uh, uh, i mean before you add value and get your synergies what is the current ebitda uh, margin run rate uh, any clarity on that currently it's in uh, high single digits uh, per se uh but like i said they're just getting their house in order after doing a full clean up uh so therefore they should be able to get to low double digits even without our interventions and we do think there is significant amount of cost take out to be done and therefore it will be accretive to our ebitda margin okay sir that's all from me thanks and all the best thank you our next question is from the line of vismaya agarwal from city please go ahead uh hi sir uh, congratulations on the great acquisition uh, just one bit if you could please share some more details on the capital foods portfolio in terms of any breakdown in terms of sauces and noodles or any other large parts and you know from a category perspective which are these uh, with they which you see as the big growth driver for the company going ahead please so which may acquisition we see we see of Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Yes, yeah, I can. sorry, sorry. We had a technical issue in the room. So, uh, in terms of opportunity, we see an opportunity. Like I said, the entire portfolio is accretive to what I have, uh, and therefore we see significant op- opportunity to grow the entire portfolio. But if I were to give you headlines, right? The Sichuan chutney is the flagship at 21 percent. Sauces are about uh, 20. Uh, Chinese masalas. noodles other masalas roughly uh, 8 to 10 and the balance are in single digit percentages mm, got it sir this help so thank you uh, and the last one uh, you know you've always maintained that mna is a big sort of growth driver uh, from the medium term perspective now that this material acquisitions uh, have happened uh, Will be prudent to expect a slight pause in that uh, strategy, or you know, does it still remain one of those things where you look for M and A's, or you'll continue to rather look for M and A's uh, even in the near term? Uh, so, let me let me say the board has reposed enormous faith in the management team by agreeing to do two large size acquisitions at the same time, uh, and therefore our ability to execute the same. So, in the sh- I think the ball is in our court. in the short term at least i think the focus will be to make sure we integrate these businesses uh, and start uh, delivering growth against this and get the engine humming we have always maintained we want to be a large fmcg company with first focus on food and beverage we look at organic and inorganic opportunities uh, that narrative doesn't change we've just got to make sure that while we are doing either organic or more importantly when we do inorganic pieces we deliver the business cases and then look at new opportunities it's we're not timing anything per se uh, but once we are sure that we've got these pieces right there's no reason we won't keep our eyes out for the next opportunity which comes along so just as a perspective uh, we've other piece we've always maintained is we will create value and there is no time limit or a target number that will go after so if you see this happened after 2 years so uh, the last one we did was smart foods so it was almost 2 years it's not that we, we we didn't have opportunities there 
but we passed all of them because we didn't think they were strategically and financially good fits when we see something happening there is no reason we won't uh, press the trigger ah uh, very clear sir thank you that's all for me thank you our uh, next question is from the line of amit purohit from elara please go ahead yeah thank you very much and congratulations uh, sir on the acquisition uh, just uh, one uh, Point on the uh, retail outlet profile uh, for Capital Foods and for Soul Food. Is it broadly similar, or uh, these uh, the profile of the retail outlet is uh, right now very different? So the profile of the retail is a typical Kirana store, uh, which you and I see up and down the street. Uh, it's just that some of the stores would sell uh, products like Soul Food for breakfast cereals, etc. Some of them would sell snacking. uh but i don't think there is a specific profile of a store which sells only soul food or only capital foods per se we do think there is an opportunity to expand into the broad majority of the stores that we cover and that is one of the big drivers for growth okay and sir uh, would you be able to help us with uh, uh, some uh, numerical number on the uh, chemist outlet uh, uh, maybe in metros uh, what could be the opportunity especially when you said that or in india could be used as a medium to scale up in that sense uh, so on specifically while uh, organic india does provide us the heft in our portfolio to now address the pharma channel uh, that, now that we have signed the agreements now we will get down to work on what is the uh, number of outlets available what is that we can address how can we go there and uh, i would say in the next 3 months or so we should be able to work out our detailed go to market strategy because remember the pharma channel operates slightly differently from all the other channels that we are used to addressing we've got to make sure we've got to go we've got various choices to address the go to market there we've just got to make sure we pick the right choice and then execute strongly behind that okay that's it thank you so much thank you a uh, moderator we'll just go to the webcast now and take a few questions from there yes ma'am so uh, there's a question from tejas at a vendor sunil he's asking in your strategic perspective for future targets do you lean towards acquiring small brands in underexplored markets large brands in saturated markets or the optimal scenario of prominent brands in less explored categories so tejas i think uh, my ideal scenario is wherever i can create value uh, with the uh, amount that i would pay, pay for uh, in organic acquisition right so it is not necessarily th- there's different um, different types of work and different types of effort in all the scenarios that you mentioned small brand in uh, under explored market or a large brand in saturated market each one has a different challenge a like i said we will look at the strategic and financial fit a b our ability to create value out of that c to make sure that we create the value we do have the competencies and capabilities right or we are getting them with the uh, targeted acquisition so i don't think there is a cookie cutter formula in any of them we look at every opportunity on its own merits okay thanks sunil uh there is a question from uh, ronak at equiris he is asking given that the growth rates in organic india has been on the lower side for the last 3 years especially and ebitda margin also has been volatile do you think uh, you need more work uh, there versus capital foods so i think i already alluded to the fact that both capital foods and organic uh, india there has been lot of noise in the numbers both top line and bottom line if you look at uh, them historically they've gone through some amount of internal issues etc which now they are on top of and they are uh, i would say currently sailing smoothly uh, uh, both of them have different uh, uh, things that i need to execute to deliver value uh, capital foods relatively easier plug and play in my distribution system uh, because most of the growth will be in india little bit into uh, export opportunities etc uh, organic india uh, i think we've got to execute both india and internationally and we've got to build a uh, go to market system but remember just as a perspective organic india gross margins are significantly higher 
and therefore uh, for the extra effort i think the money that we realize on the bottom line is also significantly higher so it might take a little bit of time but not too different uh, from each other thank you thank you sir uh, there is a question from bharat uh shade at quest he is asking can you give some color on geography wise exports of capital foods and our presence in those regions to grow export at accelerated pace uh so bharat uh, i think we already alluded to it in our presentation i think the strong uh, markets for capital foods uh, are i mean strongest relationship with the retailers are us middle east uh, and australia they are also present in other markets around uh, europe and say canada but given the fact that the largest indian diaspora market exists in us uk canada australia which is exactly where our footprint is i i do think uh, uh, these would be the markets which we will focus on to drive accelerated growth okay thanks sunil uh there's a question from richard at jm financial i think lk has partly addressed it already with respect to how much the goodwill is in so our ecs i think we'll have to have a conversation offline we have also seen your comments in your report so uh, we'll can have a conversation offline and uh, we have given a direction statement as i mentioned it also depends on the funding plan right that is you have given some some cost of capital done some working uh, which we also don't understand so maybe we can take it offline sure thanks lk uh again there is a question from ajay asking how much is the goodwill i think we've already addressed it um and then there is a question from uh vismay vismay i think you've already asked on the other q and a uh, there is a question from harini asking even with a strong double digit growth and operating margins north of 20% can we see a payback period shorter than 8 years uh, and what is the ballpark irr that we target in such deals so i think we generally look at an irr in excess of 18 to 20% and this i think will be uh, ahead of that uh, so we are fairly confident given the growth rate uh, given the uh, potential revenue synergy and cost synergy we are confident of meeting that or exceeding that okay thank you lk there is a question from mudit at franklin templeton he is asking uh, if organic india's gross margins were 67% in fy22 and 62% in fy23 why are we talking about a 55% gross margin in your communication yeah so so just as a perspective uh, the way we calculate gross margins is slightly different from the way either capital foods or organic india calculate gross margins uh, we take all variable logistics etc into the gross margins in our calculation therefore fundamentally even without doing anything you will see the numbers lower uh, and uh, uh, i would i would think if anything gross margins like i said given the 200 to 400 bips in i mean synergy is coming in straight from tra trade margins itself which will drop into gross margins I, i i do think we will deliver higher than what they were delivering okay thanks sir uh there is a question uh there is a question from disha at ashika stock stock broking she is asking could you please elaborate on the 12000 plus farmer network that tata consumer will get access to from the acquisition of organic india yeah so like i uh, i think i already alluded to it in the presentation they have got a team of 130 people at the back end uh, primarily focused on farmer connect making sure that the farmers uh, a they get the right planting advice b they get the right advice on how to grow organic how to uh, grow their productivity etc which crops to grow uh, forward looking projections uh, 2000 plus is is directly addressed by their team uh, the other is indirectly addressed they are roughly in four or five big clusters centered around northern india uh, we will get access to that entire network what that allows us to do is not only leverage that network for the current range of products but if we want to expand uh, into any new categories we get a range of farmers who have a fantastic relationship Uh, have grown through the years uh, with organic india and therefore very high level of 
credibility, goodwill and trust with the company. Uh, we aim to continue that and leverage that for expanding the portfolio. Thank you, Sunil. Uh, there is a question from Jasmine. She is asking the year-on-year -year revenue growth for Organic India has been declining over FY22 and 23. Could you give any explanation for that? Uh, like I mentioned, uh, both Capital Foods and Organic India went through their own upheavals over the past few years. Uh, I think Organic India did a lot of cleanup. You will see not only in the growth rates, you will also see in the EBITDA numbers. I think they basically had to uh, clean up to do, uh, to clean up some issues of the past. They did that and took the entire hit both on the top line and the bottom line in FY23. Uh, FY24 is a clean sheet, well-run operation, and that's what we're looking at. Thanks. Thanks, Sunil. Uh, moderator, maybe we'll just take one final question from the q and Noted, ma'am. Thank you very much. Uh, next question is from the line of Sumant Kumar from Motilal Oswal. Please go ahead. Yes, sir. Uh, can you talk about uh, dis could, uh, current distribution reach of Tata, chemical, Tata consumer benefited to Organic India internationally and domestically? So I think we already gave the numbers. Uh, organic India in India is present in 24,000 outlets. Uh, Tata consumer directly we touch 1.5 million and our total numeric reach is 3.8 million. Uh, uh, Nationally, they are... They have 48, uh, they export to 48 countries. 40% uh, of their total business comes out of the U.S. And out of that, a significant portion comes out of three big chains, which is Whole Foods, uh, Sprouts, and the Natural Grocer. No, no, I am talking about how much uh, how much percentage of total reach we have domestically and internationally. We are going to get a benefit of that current distribution. Because I don't get the number. I mean, I should be able to sell... Uh, organic India teas and infusions in almost all my outlets. So, okay. are you are you saying are you asking for in those 24,000 outlets how many will I get into? So both both sides synergy uh, we are talking about. This one point I'm talking of 15 lakh and you are you are talking so 24. I, think, uh, I think, think the synergies are more. We would be covering all that 24,000 outlets. Let me put it uh, in short. Apart from some of the Fab India outlets where we will continue to. Uh, have have the products listed going forward. Uh, there are Organic India, some 16, 17 standalone outlets which we are evaluating as we speak. Okay. okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the last question of our question and answer session. I would now like to hand the conference over to Mr. Sunil D'Souza for closing comments. Thank you. Thanks everyone for uh, joining us. Uh, I'll just go back to uh, our stated intent of becoming a large FMCG company focusing first on food and beverage, uh, number one. Number two, also saying that we will grow organically and inorganically. And when we look at inorganic opportunities, we will make sure they're value creating. Uh, both the acquisitions that we talked about today fit in perfectly along with our stated uh, platforms uh, in the food and beverage space are in faster growing categories, are higher gross margins than our current business. Uh, we do think there are significant synergies to be derived uh, starting from trade margins downwards on fixed costs. And therefore, uh, while they deliver EBITDA, uh, uh, Capital Foods, for example, is 20% EBITDA already, uh, we are extremely confident that we will be able to add to those EBITDA just as a perspective my EBITDA is currently in the 15-16% range, so significantly accretive even standalone EBITDA is going forward. Apart from the fact that we get two strong umbrella brands, we get two decently strong supply chains, uh, one extremely strong agri uh, sourcing supply chain, a set of people with knowledge, uh, institutional knowledge in those categories, uh, great relationships with retailers globally. Uh, and uh, perfect uh, synergies in the outlets that we address to drive both top line and incremental bottom line for us. Uh, also, we are looking at uh, funding options to make sure that uh, we, we can, A, in the short term while we execute these opportunities, 
we will continue to explore opportunities as we go forward to make sure we continue the momentum on growth for Tata Consumer. Thank you. Thanks, everyone, for joining. Thank you. On behalf of Kotak Institutional Equities, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.